Hi guys, good morning and welcome to the session. Uh, this is Primus Learning. My name is Primus Veku. And uh, today's session, um, we just want to uh, walk you through the process of migrating applications uh, from on-premise environments to, um, to AWS, right? To EKS, that's the Elastic Kubernetes Service in, in AWS. So in this, in this uh, tutorial, we shall um, assume so the first assumption is that uh, our ec2 instance shall act as the um the uh, on premise you know on premise environment so we we will provision an ec2 instance and install docker inside um and run an application inside that ec2 instance so that will be considered our ec2 instance that that server could be in in GCP. It could be anywhere on your local environment, a local machine somewhere on your data center or something. We just want to have a Linux a Linux box or a Linux machine running somewhere. And that's why we're creating an EC2 instance for that purpose. So that's, that's the assumption. And then we are assuming that you have an AWS account. You understand the basics of, you know, DevOps and, and processes. Um, once you have those things, you are ready to follow this step-by-step -step tutorial again, guys. Um, so we are moving things this time from local, our local environment to EKS. The last uh, tutorial, we did it and moved it to ECS. So the first process here will be the same as that one, but the second process will be different because we are migrating migrating this one to EKS. And then we'll build um, a continuous delivery and continuous integration pipeline on top of it. So a CI CD pipeline using GitHub Actions, such that once we modify our code, we should be able to see the changes, um, you know, just just uh, automatically after our pipeline runs. So that's what we are doing uh, in today's um, tutorial. So the steps are similar. We'll create an EC2 instance, install Git inside, install Docker, you know, make sure it has the right access. We'll configure the AWS CLI on this instance, and then we'll create an EC um, or an ECR repository, so an elastic um, container registry, in order to push the image that would build uh, to that container, and then um, we'll deploy our application, start it, and make sure it's working. That environment will be considered our local environment or our on-premise environment. That will be the first section of this tutorial. The second section will be this one where we will migrate the application over to AWS. So the, the, the importance of this is that migration process is moving it to EKS. And so it will be running on e EKS, you know, um, uh, so the process to do that will be creating an EKS cluster. Um, and then first of all, uh, Immediately, I introduced this who we'll create that cluster so that it runs. It takes about 10, 15 minutes to create a cluster. And so we'll just create a cluster and let it uh, complete the process while we're explaining and going on with the other processes. So that's what we will do. And then after that, uh, we'll run some CTL commands in there to deploy it. And after that, we will um, uh, enhance the GitHub actions on top of it. And I'll explain all of that. And then we'll look at our application, we'll take a, a look at our application to see if it's deploying correctly and if it de deployed, uh, if we correctly migrated to um, to EKS. So that's that's how this tutorial will look today. Um, thanks for joining us, uh, Primus here at Primus Learning. And guys, please don't forget to hit, hit the subscribe button. Uh, also, don't forget to hit the notification button so that you get more updates, more videos from us um, whenever they are released. Also, guys, uh, share content, comment, let us know your thoughts, and um, maybe just tell us what videos you want us to do for you uh, so that we can create more uh, videos to help you in your journey to become a better DevOps engineer, to become a better solutions architect, to become a better cloud engineer, or, you know, a better uh, engineer in general. All right, uh, so let's get after this process. So 
um, we want to make sure that we have an EKS cluster that's running. So that's the first thing we'll do. Uh, so let's let's go here. And uh, I have a command here to create an EKS cluster, right? So the command is using EKS CTL. EKS CTL create AWS documentation has this, so you can learn more about it. EKS CTL create cluster. So that's the command and the dash dash name is the option we're giving it and the name of the cluster will be Primus Learning. And then the region we are passing is US East 2. The node group name is Linux nodes. So we want to use Linux nodes in this uh, process. And the node types will be T2 micro and the number of nodes that we are giving it is two. All right, so let's hit this command going and create a cluster for ourselves in EC2. So in uh, uh, the US East 2 region. So we're creating it in US East 2. All right. So let's let this process run. As, as it's running, um, I want us to go to the AWS um, console and log in and create an EC2 instance. So let's go in here. Uh, I think I'm already logged in or not. Uh, let's refresh and make sure that we're logged in. Okay. So I will log in to this account using this root. Uh, user, you can log in using uh, your IAM user's best practice, of course. And uh, uh, I have an EC2 instance that's running. I think I will just delete this one so that we don't um, skip, you know, skip over each other. So for those who want to follow step by step, you just come in and create an EC2 instance. So just launch an EC2 instance. I'll name this one Primus Learning. Primus learning, all right. Then um, I will scroll down a little bit to select the uh, uh, Amazon Linux to type uh, machine here. So that's what I'll, I'll use. So I'll, I'll, I'll go with Linux and uh, the Amazon uh, Linux 2 version of the EMI. And uh, the option that I will select for instance type would be Let's use the T2 small. The T2 micro is too small. Let's use the T2 small uh, for this for this you know tutorial. And then we'll select the key pair. Uh, if you don't have a key pair, you can create a new one. Uh, we'll just call this key pair Primus Learning Pipeline KP key pair, so that you know it's it's a new one. You see the process. All right. So we've created the key pair. You see we've downloaded it. It's in our downloads folder. It's important because that is where you'll be logging in from to the EC2 instance, to wherever your key is found. You can move it to anywhere and then you log in from there, from that path, right? You want to have pointed to the path where you'll be logging into the EC2 instance. And then also make sure you allow port 80 open. So we're allowing uh, traffic to the internet from that instance. So that's why we're opening it up to HTTP. You can allow HTTPS as well, no problem. All right, I think everything looks okay. That's Those are just the two things I wanted you to do on the screen, then hit launch. One instance, use the default security group and just allow this part here and hit and uh, create. So the instance is creating. <clears throat> Let's make sure it's running. So let's see, this one is terminated the old one and then the new one should be starting in a moment so it's here it's pending let's give it time to begin running in the meantime we can uh, also check to see if our oh it failed to create our eks cluster so let's do this one moment Hi guys, um, so uh, let's get after this, I have to rush into something, I'm back. So let's get after this. Um, my cluster is in the process of creation, right? So it's it's currently creating. Um, now let's go into this instance, it's currently running. This is the public IP address and all that. Let's log into this cluster. So we'll just copy, this login information so we want to ssh into this um into this easy or so let's use this one here 
uh, let's do let's yeah let's use this one and uh, do cd i want to cd to documents no not documents to download because that's where our key is right so we want to ssh from here so we'll do that we want to do this yes we want to do that okay so we need to run ch mode 400 on that on that key pair so sometimes you need to run that to be able to to give it access right to reduce the kind of access you have so we've done that now let's connect to connect it to the ec2 instance so let me enlarge this so we've connected to our ec2 instance and we want to basically install some stuff inside right so these are the commands up here you can follow you have all the commands so you just do um so one to first of all install git you see the commands are right here so you can follow uh, as well so we'll do sudo yum install git all right so it's installing git you're asking if yeah yes install git please so let's clear um so let's make sure that we have all the yum updates so you run yum update so do yum update yes install the updates that you have so it's updating uh the system when it's done updating we want to run yum install docker so we want to install docker so you run sudo yum install docker and then you want to pass the y argument on it the dash y so that it automatically accepts without you having to accept over and over so let's run that and install docker after that, we'll use systemctl to install, uh, to start Docker. So sudo system et, system ctl, sorry, ctl start Docker. So that's what we want to do. All right, we've started Docker. Now we want to change. the user we want to add this user so user mode we want to add this user to that group so we want to add ec2 to the docker group here so space ec ec2 user all right so we've done that and now let's exit this terminal and come back in so you just use the, the ssh command again to log back into the system and the system is ready to go now we want to configure aws on this aws instance right on this ec2 instance so we'll do aws configure you see these are the various steps guys follow them you can follow them step by step i've written them out here for you so you just run aws configure oh so I'm, I'm somewhere else control z just run aws configure and uh, get your access key and secret access key i think i still have my access key and secret access key somewhere i'll delete it after this so that you don't see it so let me run that one so that you don't use it sorry <laughs> Okay, so I'll just do that and just do it here. And let's use US East one as our region and everything is same. All right. So this looks good. Everything should be looking good here. We've installed our this, installed our Docker, created, um you know configured our aws you could use this right you could use export but we decided to use aws configure it's the same thing and then we want to create a repository so let's go to the aws console and create an ec2 
ECR repository. So let's go to ECR, search for ECR, go here and create a repository. So we'll have a re some repositories that are here running. I'll delete these. Mm, let me just delete all of them and we'll create one afresh so you see how it's created. We'll create one. Let's delete one by one, sorry. Takes delete. Then let's delete this one. Delete. And so let's create. Let's create a new one. We'll just call it Note App. Let's call this one Note App as the repository name. So that's the repository name we're giving it. And every other thing looks good, guys. Every other thing looks good. Keep it private. You can keep it private because it's just for your app, right? Except you want to push it to the public, but here you want to leave it as is. All right, let's just create. We've created a repository called this, Note App. And so let's open this repository up and view the commands. So what I want you guys to do is to run these commands. See this on Linux. If you have Windows, you're running on Windows here, but want to run on Linux. So let's go back and forth. So I'll reduce the screen so we can go back and forth with our CLI here. So we'll do, we'll run that command. Okay, let's do that and run that command. So it succeeded. Let's run the next one, Docker build, not app. Okay, so we did not do a step. We want to clone our repository over. So once we do that, I'll explain to you what's inside this um, repository as we are doing the build. So I created a repository called Docker to EKS project. So what is inside this project? You see, we have different folders inside this project, right? We have um, we have the Docker file, we have a readme, we have a deployment.yaml file, we have a package dot uh, uh, package dash log dot json, we have a package dot json, we have a server dot js, and then we have a service dot yaml. So what is inside here? What is inside here is simply the workflow, right? The GitHub Actions workflow. This is like the pipeline itself. And what is this pipeline doing? We want this pipeline to, I, uh, you know, I explained this pipeline in a previous video, but I will explain it again here. It's the same repository that I have out here. So it's better I explain it from here so that it can be clearer to you guys. And then I will show you again up here so that you see the way it looks in GitHub. All right, so let's get to explaining this. So it's called Docker to EKS project, right? And so I've created a .github workflow. You need to have a .github workflow for GitHub Actions to work on this, on this project because we'll be working with GitHub Actions, right? I remember I told you we will, on the second part of this video, we will work with GitHub Actions, right? So this, that we'll explain this one later. So the important thing I wanted to explain here was the Docker file, because that's the next file we'll be running, right? This is the next file we will be running on the EKS class on the, on the node, on the EC2 instance. That's our local environment. So what are we doing? We want to create a local application, a, an application that is running on-premise. And the application, remember, is a Docker application, a, a Docker container. It's a Docker container that is running in an EC2 instance. And that's why I wanted to really just explain this file. And the file is just running Alpine. So from Node. So the Node we're using is, um, you want to use Node. And so the version of the base image here is for uh, Alpine, right? 14 Alpine. And so we want to create a directory after that. The work directory will be user slash src slash app right and then we want to copy all the files all the files that are here so this is the application the application contains four files one, three files one two three one two three that's the application and so we want to copy all the files into app into this look into this directory into this path here so the app 
the all these files will be located inside the directory called app and then we want to run npm install install npm and then expose this application on port 8080 and then start the server we want to start the the service start the application that is here so this is the application file these are uh, files that come with node applications node.js and react and react based type of applications so this is the file that we want to clone over so it's the same file that's here the same uh, file that's in this repository i just pushed it out right it's the same thing so you guys at least know how to push a file or push code to a github repository all right so this is the file i pushed it out here nothing has changed just pushed it as it, it is and so i want to clone this repository I want to clone it with HTTPS because it's running on that EC2 instance and I haven't done any key pair um, or any uh, key gen generation to, to configure my GitHub repository here in that instance. So I want to go inside this instance and run git clone. Remember we installed git. So I want to run git clone and clone that repository and i'm done so if i do an ls here you should see that project so i want to cd into this project so cd into docker to eks project and i've done that let me clear my screen and actually bring up this screen a little bit so you, you guys can can see clearly all right so i've done that and now the project the project in here has our our folder it, it has this file in, in there is our repository. So we have our repository and so we can run Docker commands in there, right? So let's go back to, let's go back to the ECR um, dashboard on this app and go view the commands again. So we already run this command, right? The next one is Docker build node app. So I want to build the node app. Uh, um, application that's in here. So we'll run that command. So I want to build everything that is inside node app. So it's building, it's running. So let's give it a moment to run. So it's done running uh, and it's successfully built it is successfully tagged it so let's copy the next command the next command is you see it explains build your docker image using the following command right so it built the docker image that we had in there so it used remember we have a docker file in there so it's using that docker file to build it so let's tag our our, our image right so after the build completes tag your image so you can push the image to the repository so want to tag the repository uh the the image sorry so to tag it you simply run this command as you copy you see docker tag that's docker tag and you're tagging the latest image that you built the image name is not app and then it's you're tagging it with latest and it's done let's go back to so the repository you see so we've run this one and let's run the last command here which is docker push one therefore to push this image that we've built to to this repository here you see it's uh, it's currently empty there's nothing there's no image here so we want to push that image out up to this to this place so let's go back here and clear our screens and run that command you see docker push so we are pushing the current image that we have the node app latest image to github and so the push process is ongoing all right so it's almost done here all right it's pushed out the image to docker to our docker hub it could be you could be using docker hub so you would do the same kind of push to docker hub but the 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 repository, the image repository that we're using is called ECR, Amazon ECR. And so you can refresh and you'll be able to see your latest image pushed out here. And this is our image right here, right? So we have an image that's available. We can now <clears throat> go ahead, you know, and 
deploy this application on premise. So we are deploying this application on premise, on premise, on our local environment. That is what we are doing. The process we are going through is just to deploy this application to be running on our on premise environment so that we can migrate it over to AWS. That's what we just did. We push that image out. And so after pushing that image out, we can therefore run the next commands. So the image is pushed and would have to run the next command to, um, you know, to start the container, to start the container and make the application running. So we'll run Docker to start the container, we'll run Docker, run. Dash D dash P dash D dash P, and we want to expose it on port eighty eighty. And what's the the app name? Node app. The app name is Node app, and it is the latest app. Yes, that's how we want to name it, and we. Are we run it and it's done. So we've started the container. The container is now running. And so if we go to the IP address of the EC2 instance, if we go to the IP address of the EC2 instance and look at it, we'll be expecting to see something. We're expecting to see an application running. So let's go to the EC2 instance. I think instances are here. This is the instance. And we copy the IP address. And uh, let's just use it here. And we want to run it on port 8080. So the application should be coming up in a moment. It's taking a sweet time, right? So it's taking a moment to build and all that or to start. So let's give it a moment to, to do its thing. So our application is up and running. Um, here is it. So if you follow the instructions correctly, you should have hello from Primus Learning and it should be running on this um, host right here. So the tag name, the environment tag is stage, host container name is this, and then it should be running this, right? So this is running on a local EC2 instance, which we log into and uh, uh, installed stuff inside and ran a Docker image. This is the Docker image right here. And so it is currently running on premise, right? So let's say your application at work is running on premise like this, right? It's running somewhere on your servers like this. And your work as a DevOps engineer has been, hey, please migrate this application to EKS. Migrate this to EKS. And of course, the application has this type of files. Your developers have them in your repository, right? In your GitHub environment. What then can you do to, you know, have this application running in AWS? First of all, the first thing is you have to create a cluster. Remember the process? These steps down here, you have to create a cluster, an EKS cluster. Remember, we ran this step. The first thing we, was we ran this step with this command, right? We use this command to run this first step. Why? Because that, that cluster would have taken a long time to create. And that's why we ran it early. It took, takes like 10, 15 minutes to create a cluster. So the cluster is created. You see, we have the command here. The cluster has been created. All right. So after creation, you have some things to do. You have to configure some things in the cluster to be able to connect to it and do some work inside the cluster. Right, so those 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 are um, things that you have to do in order to get that thing, get the application migrated to EKS. And so after 
creating this, let's um, go ahead to the next step. One moment. Let's go ahead to the cluster. So we have to go up to the EC2, uh, to the ECS environment and uh, run this application on it. Migrate this app right here on the ECS environment. So let's navigate to our AWS account, go into ECS, type ECK, EKS, sorry, EKS. I'm only thinking of ECS because that's, that's the service we did last time, right? Let's go here to verify that we have our uh, cluster and it's up and running. Yes, this is our cluster and it's up and running. We named it Primus Learning Migration. So this is the cluster right here. You see it's looking good. And now how do we deploy stuff inside this cluster, right? How do we deploy our application inside this cluster? Remember, I just said you have to run some commands. And now the importance of these two files, this file and this file. Let's look into these files. Let's explain these files. Now, you see this file here called deployment.yaml. This, this is pointing us to the image of the app we just created, right? Remember, we pushed the app to EKS. For instance, on, in your environment, you are using Docker Hub. You could build the application. You could build the application and decide to use the same Docker Hub, and you just pass the the image, um, the image link URI, the image URI to your image to your deployment file, and that's it. It will fetch the image for you. And so that's exactly what we're doing here. We've passed the image because the image is existing in in AWS for us, right? We have the image right here and that's why we've put it here. So it will link us, go fetch that image. So if you go here, you see the URL for that image and this is it coming here. This is the URL for that image. You see, this is it. And it's exactly what we have out here on this, on this um, image uh, path here, on this image here. All right, so let's explain this file. It's just, a deployment that we want to do. So the app, the API version is uh, app slash v1, and the kind is deployment, metadata, notepad, uh, notepad app, notepad app, one, just one replica of this, uh, this application. Um, and the container uh, configurations, we have the name, which is not app, and then the image, where is the image coming from? This is where the image is coming from. And we want to expose this on the container port, which is 8080. And that's it. And so there is a service.yaml file, and we want to use a service to be able to see this application, right? The service kind, the, the, the API version is v1, the kind is service, and then everything is same. We want to expose it on port 80, and the target port is 8080. So this application should uh, be running to us in, in port 80, right? But the target port is 8080 because it's been deployed on port 8080. You can see it on port 8080 here. The image is on port 8080. And so once we run our commands from here, once we do a, a, a kubectl apply, it will build, it will use this, this, this image right here and build everything that is inside into our EKS cluster, which we already created. And then once we do this, it will expose this service. It will expose this to a load balancer. You see the type here is load balancer. It expose it to a load balancer so that we can be able to visualize that, that, that application that is running on EKS. All right. So um, to be able to, you know, to be able to, to be able to, use that EKS cluster that we've created, we, you need to run this command right here. To be able to use the EKS cluster, you need to run this command. And you know our name, our EKS cluster name was Primus Learning dash migration. And so you have to put this here and give the name Primus Learning dash migration. Why are you doing this? You're doing this because you want to tell the context. You want to tell the kube config file. 
that hey i want to use this particular uh this particular this particular eks cluster take for instance if you had so many eks clusters on your aws in your aws account how would you tell eks you know to use one particular one how you tell eks to use which particular one right so this is how you will tell it to use this so you update your cube config files and um, precise to it tell it hey at this moment i want to access this particular um eks cluster so that's what we'll do and it's added that context and now let us deploy this application the app it has nothing to do with this right because the application is already it has an image already it has an image so in your local environment you created your application already it was already running so you are not creating a new application guys so this is what i wanted to to make note take make you take note here sorry english is hard so i wanted you guys to take note of this the application is already created it is already even running on your local environment you just want to migrate it migration simply means moving it over there is no specific way to migrate something but if you can migrate it simultaneously you see they will ask you in an interview what type of migration strategy would you use is it a blue green deployment is it a what kind of strategy right so you see we have one that is up and running one that is up and running in your local environment and we also want to do an eks uh, migration we want to move it over to ek so two will be running out at the same time and then you can gracefully take out the other one right you can gracefully shut down the other one and replace it that's what we are doing all right a blue green deployment so let's go in here and do uh, kubectl since we have kubectl installed you need to have kubectl installed before you can run it right and you have to be inside this directory docker to eks because these files the service.yaml and deployment.yaml are all inside this directory so you have to do kubectl apply dash f and then you want to apply to the deployment file deployment.yaml remember that file and we run oh um something is not found cubes oh okay sorry <laughs> you see where we are we are inside the ec2 instance so let's exit the ec2 instance that's why all right so we want to get into this file here uh that file i think is found in documents so we want to go into documents and go into docker to eks all right yeah, this is where the file is. And now if you bring back our command, uh, no, not that one. Okay, so if you do cube ctl apply, so want to apply on this file here, deployment.yaml and run. All right, so the deploy, deployment has been created. So if you do cube ctl, get deployments you should see the deployments created you see uh it's not yet ready but it's created so you see not app is this 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 is not yet ready so if we run it again and again it should be ready in a moment okay so our deployment is created actually so let's see if it's ready oops what did I do? Not yet ready. Not yet ready. Let's just give it a moment. But we can also create our service. This is our service. Um, so the service command is the same command. So you have you all have the commands. I'll share this um, with you. And the service is created as well. So you see the service is created, which means a load balancer should be created on this service, right? Using this service or this file right here. This is the file for the service. So we've created that. And if you do kubectl get services, you should see that there's a service that is created and there's a load balancer exposing it to this external IP here or to this external IP, which is this. 
And this is how you get to see the application, right? You can also view it from the EC2 instance. You can go to the EC2 instance and go to load balancers and look for this load balance, the load balancer with this DNS name. Um, and you should be able to find this. And so let's go to our thing here. So we have one application that is running on the other side. It's running on an EC2 instance, right? Remember that, that application? This one, it's running on this EC2 instance. Now we have another application which is running and it is running here, right? So I think it's still deploying. Yeah, it's still deploying. It should take a moment to, to come live. Still taking its sweet time. So let's give it a moment, guys. While while it's deploying, um, I'll I'll run and be back. All right, guys. So the image the image is is showing. Uh, took a while to to um come on. That's why I had to pause and get back here. And all right, so our image is running. You see, uh, well, not our image. Our application is running on EKS. Now you see it's running on EKS instead of running on an EC2 instance. So you have two places where your application is running simultaneously, and you can gracefully stop this one. You can gracefully shut down the EC2 instance, right? So let's terminate, terminate the EC2 instance, right? So that your application can continue to work normally on your EKS cluster and people can begin to use it. You can just redirect then the IP address, you can just redirect the DNS name to your organization um, domain name, and that's it. So let's delete that instance. We've deleted, but your application will stop working here and it will continue to work here, right? This one continues to work. All right, so this is the second part. This is the second part of our demo. You can, you can visualize what everything is happening here using EKS, uh, using, K9S. So let me show you what K9S is. So let's clear this stuff here and do K9S. Um, I have a video on K9S which explains what it is and how it works in our YouTube channel. Please just go to our YouTube channel, search for um, K9S and uh, you should be able to find it. All right. So I will just need to run K9S and see what happens. It's taking a sweet time. K9S is coming up. And this is K9S. This is the way you can use it to visualize your application. So I don't want to use it here because it's kind of small uh, in, in, this, in this context. Let's go here and enlarge to make it bigger so that we can, we can really see, see clearly K9S. So let's wait for it to come up. All right, can I add? And here we go. And the context we want to get into is this one, Primus Learning. Oh, it looks like we didn't, no, uh, let's see, hold on. Yeah, it should be run. Let's see. Why are you not behaving well? So let's do from here again. Okay, yes. So it's it's up and running now. So let's see where this one is. Enlarge. Okay, so you can see you can use this to monitor your applications, right? You see your application that is running node app. This is the port. So you can actually get into this port and look at the logs if, by just, you know, just typing, searching for logs. So to see the logs, you have to go to the logs. You see, this is the, this is the, this is the container. The container is node app. And to go to logs, 
oh sorry not not there so to go to the services you can go to services just type services like that and go to services so you see not app this is it running on this load balancer this is the the dns name you can go to um the port by hitting shift the shift key and the uh, colon key and then you just type you see this commands this this um keys here so you can do l for logs, you can do uh, a question mark for help, E for edit. So you can actually edit this, this up here and so on and so forth. You can edit it, you can do a lot of things here. So you can go into the ports. These are the services you can go into the port. Uh, okay, dismiss. And we can actually see what's happening in here, right? Right. See the logs. So it will take a while. Logs usually take a while to come. This is a neat tool, guys. You can you can take take a look at it. But yeah, um, go back. So you see, you can see your cluster, the cl the migration cluster, the Primus learning migration cluster. See your things that are running. Let's go to the deployment. We have a deployment here. So to search for a deployment, we just type deployment. And we have node port, which is running. So go back here and we'll look at the logs. You see some logs as well. Or you can actually, if you don't want to look at logs, you can actually edit this and you see, you see, this is this is what is running inside. This is the deployment. The deployment file is running in here, right? So it converts it into its own thing. You can edit it and see it and all that and even modify it from here. You can delete it from here. You can do everything that you do it with um, applications from here. So I just wanted to show you this quick nifty tool. To quit it, you just put Q there and quit and you've quit the application. All right, so that's the first part of our thing. We wanted to show you how to migrate. So we've migrated it over to to um, EKS. Now that you've migrated, I want us to build a pipeline on top of it so that when you make a change here, it automatically deploys. It automatically deploys. And so to make this happen, you need to go into this file, or no, sorry, into this file right here, right? So we can explain this file now. Let me X this one here. All right, so you need to go into this file. Let me explain what it does. So this is this is simply the, the pipeline. This is the pipeline, the GitHub Actions pipeline. And you see how it works. You define the name. So the name here is the project name, Node.js uh, Node app deployed to EKS. On, we are pushing on the main branch. So we want to push it out to the main branch, right? And then, we want it to have these functions right here. We, are, we want to define a job and want to call it a deploy. This could be any name that you give it. And then you want to run it on Ubuntu. We are running this on Ubuntu. So it's a GitHub runner. And then the steps, the various steps. You will see these steps also when you run your pipeline in GitHub Actions. So the first thing is check out code. This is the name you're giving it, check out code. You see this. The action is it's using it's using a, a marketplace code, right? A marketplace function that has been already defined. I explained it in the, in the last vi uh, video and actions are simply, it's simply uh, um, a functionality that somebody has built and pushed out to the GitHub marketplace. And so you can use it rather than write code, actual, uh, actual code out for yourself. So what this does is it just goes, figures out whatever thing um, uh, whatever code is found in this repository and it makes use of it. And then you want to use the next thing which you want to do is install. You want to install kubectl, right? Uh, install kubectl and uh, use this, this functionality as well, this version and, and all of that. Configure the AWS credentials on the EKS cluster if they are not configured and all of this so you want to do all of these steps if they are not done right of course so you do all of that 
although the application is already running on it. So this time it will just be about just doing some changes on our code. So once you've done that, you, you make sure that um, you log in into ECR, push, build, push an application and all that and, all, and so on and so forth. So these steps are just, the, this is the login step. This is the build step and the registry you're getting, get the, the, the Docker image and from the registry that is provided, the registry is the repository, right? And it will get it by the repository, the registry, the repository name, the and the image tag. And, and so those things are defined. So uh, those those things are defined in your, your Docker image. You remember, you remember that. You'll just go in there and, and, and pick up, log into your to your ECR environment, and that's it. And so update kubectl config. So you update this config. And because the name of our cluster is not Primus Learning, we'll have to figure this out. So the name of our, uh, our thing is migration like this. It's Primus Learning Migration. That, that's the name of our cluster. So you have to update this to uh, look like that. And then you use this to deploy applications to to that environment. So this is all this file is doing. Once you've deployed it, you see you deploy this file, this first file, and deploy the second file. That's all you're doing. So this is all, once you've done this and made your changes, you can change something on your code. So I will do a quick change directly from here. I don't, I don't want to push directly from down there. The only change that I want to do is in this file, uh, in this workflow file. The only change is here. So let me go up here. See how, how this will automatically deploy once I do this change. So I want to call it migration. That's the cluster name. The cluster name changed. Oh, it, it will fail. It will fail because I haven't configured the KMS keys or the, 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 the keys for this cluster, for this repository. So I created this repository and I haven't set the um, the login credentials. So you have to go to settings and set the login credentials for this to work. So let me show you that step. Let me just let it fill. So if you go to GitHub Actions here, you should be able to see a deployment. You see, I did some other deployments before this class just to test out and they were working. And then I deleted the keys because I changed the user that I'm using. So if you get here to GitHub Actions, that's how you go to the actions, go to GitHub Actions. You see this one will fail because it will not find uh, credentials to use. It will not be able to, all right. So you see it failed because it didn't find creden AWS credentials to use guys. That's what I was telling you. It couldn't find load. Please check you, uh, your action inputs, credentials from any provider. There's no, there are no credentials. No credentials were provided. And so let's set the credentials here. That's the first thing you have to do after pushing your, your, your GitHub thing. So let's go to credentials, no, to settings, sorry. And scroll down to, when, once you go to settings, you scroll down to secrets and variables, and then you have to define your secrets. So the secrets, how are you defining the secrets? So let me go back to this thing here and explain the secret. So what is happening is it will get this, it needs this ID, and it needs this uh, secret access key. So it needs AWS access key ID and secret access key. I will look for this in GitHub secrets. So the first thing you need to do is configure this secret. And the secret you want to configure, go here, type that name, just put it, and then get the secret access key ID, right? Uh, mine is somewhere here. I'll just get it, this first one, bring it up and paste here and add, add your secret. Oh, I think I locked out, so it's it's not added. This thing must have locked me out and that's why. Okay, so let me do that again. Give it this AWS access key ID and then add that secret. This is the secret, so save, it's saved. And then you add the second one, add the second one 
And the second one, you come in, copy the second piece here. Very important. If you don't have this, your, your pipeline will fail. Paste it and go copy your secret access key and bring it in. Once you do that, make sure there's no space. Now your GitHub action should be able to find something. So you can rerun this or you just do a push out there, right? So there's something I want to change here and actually push from my local. So let me just change. I think there's a talk. No, let's just run this from here. I don't want to change this and mess it up a little bit. Okay, so I see. Let's see. This file. So this image talk, let me use it this way. Why am I using it this way? I want to do it this way because I want to use it this way because um, it will automatically uh, assign a tag, a tag name to the image that you'll be deploying, right? It will automatically attack, attach a tag name. So it automatically figures out to attach a tag name to it. So that's what I, I want to do down here. So let's update this and give it that tag information to deployment. And uh, I did this because I updated this one to use the latest. All right, so let's save this file. Make sure this file is saved and let's push it out to GitHub. Mm. Git, uh, Git status, let's see what has changed. Hmm. It looks like it didn't capture this. Oh, everything looks good, actually. Maybe it has this tag. Yeah, it has this tag. It pulled it down the last time. But it should have changed. I just did the change gate status. Gate. Mm -hmm. So something changed up there. Save this and then try again gate status. Okay, so it's it's clean, it's all clean. There's nothing to commit. So we can we can actually change something here, right? In this file. So that it will notice hello. Instead of hello from Primus Learning, we can say hello, Primus Learning. This is the second demo. So this is a change we're doing. And we just want to do this so that it deploys automatically as, as we're running. So let's do that and do git status. All right, git add, want to add all. Then we do, let's clear our screen a little bit and push this thing up. We do git commit minus M and then we want to use there's a modified app, just say that, hit push. So once we push, we should have an autom it's pushed. We should have an automatic build that starts. We should have an automatic build that starts. All right, so let's go here to GitHub Actions. You see there's a build that has started. Why, what is triggering this build? It's just this, this file right here, remember? Remember this GitHub? workflow file this is the action this is what is triggering it this is what is making it to trigger right here all right so it's triggering and the workflow is on so you go to actions to see the workflow that is running and you can verify now that things are working as expected you see it's locked in it's passed all the steps for this one it's deploying to eks is deployed to EKS and everything is green. Your application should have something else here, what we just changed down there. And you didn't do any manual work. So you see, 
Hello from Primus Learning. This is the second demo. You can also change any other thing. So let's 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 just change that statement again a little bit. And just so to see if if our thing is actually actually working. So hey, let's change something here. Instead of hello, let's say Primus Learning is the your in institution of choice reach out to us at primus learning let's say at contact at primus learning dot org for all devops training devops and aws training and aws training all right, so once you do that and save, save, so we've saved that. And we can do git add all because we have a, an update and then git commit. You meet git commit and we do minus M. Um, a commit message, we want to give it a commit message and we'll say modified app. All right, git push. So we should see a change that is occurring. And so let's go back to AWS here to here. You go to your GitHub actions again, you should see an action that is running. So go, go back to actions, go to actions. You see an action, there's a modification that's happening. There's a deployment that's taking place. And if you go to ECS, right? You see it's deploying new things. A lot of things are happening, pushing a container out, doing all of this work, tagging it, pushing it, logging in, and everything is working. And if you go to ECS now, uh, if you go to ECS, so if you go to ECS, you should see, um, ECS, oh, what am I doing? ECR, sorry, sorry, ECR. You should see images, new images that are pushed, right? And the image, the one we're going into is this one. You see, these are new images that are pushed with the with new tags. The tag is according to the tag ID, the, the image ID. So it takes the image ID and puts it as the tag ID as I did. So you see, it has new tags new images this is the new image that's deployed and if you do go back to your image now you should have something different here new information which is what we changed primus learning is your institution of choice reach out to us at contact at primuslearning.org for all devops and aws training so guys we we built the app in our local environment right which was an ec2 instance this is where we did the first step We've deleted the, the we've by now deleted the EC2 instance. Then we created an EKS cluster and made it to work, to run normally, right? Remember the, the EKS commander we ran the first time it failed, the second time we ran again because you know we had some 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 issues to clean up in our environment. And so we ran it created an EKS cluster. And we've used that cluster to do a deployment. We did a a, a a blue green deployment one was actually running then we did a second one right and once this second one is up we then deleted the, deleted the first one because we don't need it anymore and on top of that we added a github actions workflow a ci cd pipeline using github actions on this and so once you deploy your code now your changes to your code it automatically picks it up you don't need to manually do a deployment or do a change in your code you simply need to push and you're pushing it out on what once you have a merge you see once you have a merge to the main branch or there is a pull request so if somebody who doesn't have access to your to merge to your repository directly does a pull request and you merge it it will automatically trigger a github actions and that's what happened here all right guys so this was it for this video i just wanted to show you guys how you can do this do a migration and that a migration is typically not just you know, some work extended thing. This is a migration that you did here, migrated an application to uh, EKS and it is working uh, correctly. So these are the various steps that we took guys to do this. Now to clean up, you just need to, 
to um, do kubectl. Mm, I think I put that command somewhere. Uh, the eks delete command. So let me see. This is the cleanup part. You have to clean up else you may miss us you you probably would have a bill of two thousand dollars on your name right so make sure you clean up after after doing everything guys always always clean up if not you're you're done you 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 will you have a bill that is beyond your comprehension aws bills are usually tough so you don't want to be in that scenario guys so Let's go to this and run the command EKSCTL. Mm, EKSCTL. So EKSCTL delete cluster, I think. Delete cluster and then cluster name. Name. That's the that's the that's the option you give it. Primus learning dash migration. That's the the name of the cluster. So we we'll do that and hit enter and it will start deleting the resource for you. All right, guys. Uh, so this is how you delete your resources and you can delete your image as well. Um, I will share the, the, the video with you guys. I will share uh, on YouTube. I will also add these steps to the descriptions uh, section of the video. And I'll also update, um, you know, that description with the code base. So there will be a link to my GitHub repository so you can uh, do this yourself. Thanks guys for your usual support. Thanks for your love. We really appreciate um, you uh, watching our videos and please continue to uh, subscribe, share our videos, comment. Let us know what you think. Uh, let us know your thoughts as far as these videos are concerned. Please leave us um, some comments and hit the notification button. The next project that we have coming up guys is huge it's huge it's a data uh, pipeline that we'll be building it's going to be a long project but it will be very very useful for solutions architects devops engineers and you know anyone who wants to who wants to learn about uh, stuff like this so thank you so much for joining us today uh, looking forward to meeting you again bye-bye